In this video, we're going to be continuing um, talking about properties of exponents. Um, this time, though, mo focused more on fractional exponents and radicals. So, our first property is the product property. It said that if we multiply two bases with different exponents, we can write that as one base and add the exponents. Um, so what that looks like with fractional exponents would be something like this. Just to keep it simple, we'll keep the same denominator there. So we're multiplying 3 to the 1 half power and 3 to the 3 halves power. We can write that as 1, 3 and add our exponents. And so we're adding fractions. We want to make sure that the denominator is the same before we add the numerators. So we would end up with 4 halves, which reduces down to 2. So we get 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9. All right, our next property is the powers of powers property here. And in this case, we say that we multiply those two exponents together. So what that looks like with fractional exponents, let's see, what was it, 3 halves, let's say, all squared. Um, so in this case, we would multiply our exponents. And when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So we would get 6 on top, 2 on the bottom, which reduces to 3. So we have 4 thirds, which becomes 64. All right, another property of exponents is our product property here again two different numbers, all being raised to one power. We distribute that exponent to each of those. And so what that would look like would be something, something like this. 9 times 4 to the 1 half power. We could do one of two things. We could simplify this. Um, because there are two numbers, we could go in one direction here and say that's 36 to the 1 half power. And 1 half power is the square root. And the square root of 36 would give us 6. Or I could go in another direction here. I could distribute my exponent here and have 9 to the 1 half times 4 to the 1 half, which would be the square root of 9, which is 3, times the square root of 4 which is 2, which would still give me 6. So a lot of times um, when we're doing this polynomial stuff with exponents and radicals, there are many different avenues we could go down, many different paths we could take to solving these. Um, some are going to be easier than others, you know. Sometimes if you get stuck, it's always a good idea just to start over, take a new route, see if you can solve it a slightly different way, change some forms up. Um, it's about the best advice I can give you. There's definitely not one single way to solving these or simplifying these. Uh, what do we got? The quotient property. It says that we could write this as one base and subtract our exponents. So with some fractional exponents here, if I had 6 to the 5 halves uh, divided by 6 to the 1 half, then I could say that's 6 to the 5 halves minus 1 half. Um, as long as we're subtracting fractions, make sure the denominator is the same. So we get 4 halves, which reduces to 2, and 6 squared is 36. All right. 
right, another property of exponents. Another negative exponent. Um, remember that that translates to 1 over a to the mth. Um, and likewise, it's always nice to remember that if it starts as 1 over a negative exponent, something to the negative exponent, then that means to go back, to go back up here. But of course, get rid of that negative. If we move it up or down, we got to get rid of the negative. That uses it up. All right, so what does that look like? Let's do an example here. If I had 25 to the negative 1 half, I would rewrite that as 1 over 25 to the 1 half. That gets rid of my negative. And then that would also be written as the square root of 25. So 1 over the square root of 25 would give me 1 over 5. Um, remember that we can never leave a radical as a denominator. In this case, we got rid of it, so we're allowed to say we're done. Um, what else could we have done here? I could have done... No, let's not even talk about it. Let's just keep it as it is. Keep going here. One last one. Another quotient property here. In this case, we would distribute that exponent So what does that look like? Let's do 8 over 27 to the 1 third. So if we can simplify this fraction, that might be nice to do first. Or it might be nice to keep it in this form and distribute the exponent. So I'm going to try that. So we got the cubed root. That's what the 1 third exponent is of 8 and distributing. And I'm going to distribute to the bottom as well. So that's the cube root as well of 27. Cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So again, we got rid of the radical and the denominator. Uh, we didn't have to rationalize. I'll talk about rationalizing um, to get rid of this in a later video. Let's hold off on that. Um, but basically, these are the properties of our rational exponents, um, but this time we're using fractional exponents. All the properties still work the same, you just got to remember your fraction math, um, and it will also help to change the form from exponent form to radical form. That might also help you. All right, we'll continue this. Let's see. When we're talking about radicals, it's always nice to remember this one property here. It's called the product property. If we have two numbers being multiplied or two factors of one number under a radical to any index, to any power, we're allowed to write them in their own radical. That may help you simplify. Um, but we could also go back in this direction. If we start with a problem here, and uh, writing it in this form helps us simplify, we're allowed to do that. Let's think about that. And then vice versa, we got the quotient property here. If we're dividing two numbers under a radical with any given index, we're allowed to break it up. But each of those numbers in their own radical on top of each other. We're also allowed to go the other way if it starts in this form. Um, it just depends on whatever helps us simplify it the easiest. It's always about what's easiest. So let's do a couple more examples here. Uh, if I had 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 1 fourth, um, since I have the same base, 
I could rewrite that as just 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth. Here's an example where we don't have the same denominator. we got to get the same denominator first. So if I use 4 as my common denominator, then this would translate to 2 fourths. Um, and this would be 1 fourth still. So then I could add them and get 3 fourths. Uh, this would be my answer in exponent form. I could also rewrite it using my radical form. So that would be 5 to the third, and I'd be taking the fourth root of it. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes questions will ask you to put it in a certain form. Other times it won't really matter, and you can put it in whatever form you prefer. Let's do another one. <clears throat> Five. All right. So in this case, I could I could multiply these two if I had eight. If I had the same base, but since I don't have the same base, I can't. So I gotta just distribute my exponents separately to each of these. Um, and when I do that, I'm multiplying. So we got that. This right here, let's say it's over 1 if that helps. Multiply straight across, we get 8 to the 2 over 2, which would reduce to 8 to the first power, which is 8. Um, and then we would have 5 to the 2 thirds. Um, so we could write our final answer in exponent form, like such. We don't even need the 1 if you don't want it there. Or we could write it in radical form. 5 squared, and we'd be taking the cubed root. So either radical form or exponent form for that one. Got time for maybe one or two more examples. Let's do uh, 7 divided by 7 to the 1 third. So this may be the first time you've seen a fraction to a fraction. But we can do this if we change the form, it might make more sense. Let's try it. I'll write this as the cubed root of 7 over 7. This may be more familiar. Um, we want to rationalize to get rid of a radical in the denominator if we can't simplify any farther. If we're stuck, we got to rationalize. Um, so we want to make a perfect cube. Um, that would be the easiest way to undo this. So if I'm taking a cube root of something, I need a cube of something to get root to undo it the opposite, right? So if I multiply by 7 squared, that would give me 7 cubed, which would undo a cube root. And I'd be left with 7 on the bottom. Um, but I can't do one thing to the bottom of a fraction. I also got to do it to the top, keep it balanced. Um, so when I do that, I get 7 times the cube root of 7 squared. And we could rewrite that if we wanted as 7 to the cube root of 49 over 7. And then simplify these two 7s. And just be left with the cube root of 49. We could also go back all the way over to here reduce our 7 over 7, get rid of that, and be left with uh, the cubed root of 7 squared, and then write that in exponent form. That's what I was trying to do over here. Um, and we'll get 7 to the 2 thirds power. So either exponent or radical form there. Um, yeah, so good luck. Again, that's pretty much the best example I can give you of where um, there's many different ways we could go. It just depends on what the answer requires you to do. Um, and if it doesn't matter, it's kind of up to you what you want to write it as.